It's time for the last part of the statue making process, which is pouring and painting. Here I have my bucket with my concrete, and of course I have my mold as well. So all I'm gonna do is add some water to my concrete, mix it, and pour. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail on types of concretes and different things that you can use because there is so much information out there. You can basically go to any hardware store and pick up a ton of different kinds of concrete, mortar mixes, you name it, it's out there. Do a little research and pick the concrete mix that you think will work best for what you're doing and then you're just going to follow the directions on the bag. Concrete is an interesting substance. It's a chemical reaction that causes it to cure, not like a drying time. Also, the more water you add, the less strength it's going to have, so less water is better. And there are also a ton of additives, things that make it smoother to pour or allow it to pour better with less water, like water reducers, super plasticizers, you name it, it's out there. So after you've picked your concrete and you add your water, before you pour, you're gonna want some kind of mold release. I just use castor oil because it is not petroleum based. And once I spray the castor oil in, I just make sure that it's not puddled and I'm ready to pour the concrete. A couple more notes on concrete is you don't want to pour your mixture or let cure in freezing temperatures and you also want to wear gloves because it does have lye in it. Be sure to mix your concrete mixture well once you've added your water so there are no clumps and then you're going to pour it into your mold while shaking your mold at the same time to try and get the concrete into the details of the mold. I'll usually just shake the piece, but you can also use like a vibrating table or some people use like a rubber hammer and knock the sides of the mold to get the concrete in all the details and the bubbles to the surface. Once your mold is filled, just shake the mold a little bit to even out the top and it just needs to sit until cured. For a normal concrete, that's 24 hours and of course it's actually 30 days until it's completely cured, but it does depend on the mix you're using. Okay, so this piece has been sitting 24 hours. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the bolt and remove the piece from the latex rubber. Now, sometimes I've heard to these molds being referred to as glove molds because that's basically what you're doing. Like you're gonna pull off a glove. You're just going to pull the mold up directly off of the concrete underneath, like removing a glove. Now that the piece is out of the mold, it usually is a good idea to let it sit and cure for 30 days before you add paint. But the next step in the process will be painting. So this little guy has been sitting long enough and he's ready for his paint. The first thing to do with dry brushing is add a base coat of a darker color. I use a house paint, a black latex house paint for my base coat. You don't want the paint to pool in places, but you do want to make sure you get in all of the detail and texture of the piece with the paint. Now that the first layer of black paint is dry, it is time to dry brush on the layers of color. Dry brushing is an easy way to paint any piece that's got detail. You basically just have a dark undercoat and then you put a little bit of colored paint on your brush and then you wipe off excess paint, which only leaves a little bit of paint on and you put that on the piece. So it puts paint on the piece without the paint going into the detail, which gives it this really cool effect where you can see the dark detail underneath and then the layers of color on top. I usually build up my color. Sometimes I start with a darker brown and I'll dry brush that onto the piece and then maybe I'll add a little bit of white to that um, and add that onto the piece just in layers until it reaches a light enough color that shows all the dimension of the texture. So here I'm starting with a tannish color and I'm just going to get any excess paint off of the brush and I'm going to start brushing it onto the piece. This is going to be the main body color and you can see how the color goes on top of the piece but the detail stays a darker color underneath. All these paints are outdoor paints so basically these will be able to be outdoors without the weather and sun affecting them too much. You obviously don't want to use inside paints for anything you're planning on putting outside. These paints are pretty hardy. It's basically the same thing you'd paint your house with. So I'm just going to continue to add this brown paint to the body main part of the snail until I have enough color on it. I think that he looks pretty solid. That's looking pretty good. So now I'm going to start dry brushing color onto the shell and I'm going to be using just a gray variation for the shell. 
I'm just going to continue to add the gray to the shell until I get the desired effect and then I'll move to a smaller brush to get around the edges to make a clean look on the break between the shell and the body. Once I like the gray, I'm going to add just a little bit extra white around it just to give it a little bit more of a pop. Alright, that's looking pretty good. I think I'm going to call that finished. I like how he turned out and I'll probably add some kind of top coat. There's lots of concrete sealers out there and it's just a good idea. It'll protect the paint underneath. So that's it for this video. If you like, please like and subscribe.